Brad and Martin are working on assembling the top half of the Rolls Royce Merlin. When servicing this Merlin a few months back, they were removing the block head assembly of the Merlin when the block jammed up due to corrosion on the long studs. In the end, they had to cut the studs in order to remove the block. The whole assembly had to be sent to Morris Hammond for expert what repair. How are these covers doing? Well, just stopping the, the collar rod smacking against the, oh. the, fry, the uh, crank case. I'm with it now, yeah. You, you see, this one's never been apart since it was put together at Rolls Royce. But all the all the ones that you see around have all got little dents there where the comrades have smashed into them. Yeah. So that is just to, just to protect them. Yeah. That is spotless down there. Spotless. Well, look. You spent 24 hours in the machine shop getting the uh, studs machined out. What is your first job then on reassembling this then? Sticking the piston. You've got to put the pistons back on. Going to glue the these back on. Yes. Yeah. So we'll stick these back on and then velcro the blocks yeah. back on. Yeah. Obviously, we, we, obviously they have put the rings on before you put them on to his... Oh yeah, well the rings are already rings on. on. Oh, the rings are rings on. Are on. Yeah. They're barely even bedded in these. No, no. It's, it's in quite good condition otherwise. It was just unfortunate the corrosion got in where it did. Yeah. And, and also, because of the age of it and how long it had been stood dry, all the block seals had started to go, so it, it, it leaked, which is why it was coming apart, was because the amount of coolant coming out of it. So, tried to get the blocks off. We tried our best. We, we managed to get part way up, didn't we, Brad? But it wasn't having it, and, and the corrosion in here was colossal, as it turned out. So much so that on the one block, it actually split the alloy casting. Because these are a tolerance fit so they don't vibrate yeah and yeah that's why that's there so it doesn't it actually split at the front here in there this is a new a new uh, skirt that yeah. split. split that did it yeah, yeah. yeah. and if you and what was, was that we're trying to get it out yeah there was so much corrosion down the hole yeah it, all it expanded up. there was no way of getting the blocked off I eventually had to cut the studs off and then the studs were removed in the machine shop. If, if you look, if you look through here, you see level. You can actually see where the studs would go here, right? You yeah. can see the hole there. Look, you see that threaded bar. Yeah, is where the studs would normally be. So that, that these are exposed to the atmosphere, as Brad says. And yes, the, the original studs. And they're are, open light, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were coated originally, but of course. 60 years, 70 years on, yeah. the coating's come off. I mean, when Rolls-Royce put the coating on in, in the 1940s and early 50s when these engines were being built, yeah. it wasn't a concern. You weren't going to have an engine stood for 50 years, oh, were you? Yeah, no. You know, it was going to be used and then stripped it. I don't think the sound quality would be so good today, Neville. <laughs> right, man, so. So, um, I'll preempt any comments on the internet. We do know what we're doing. Yes. Are you trying to talk? Well, yeah. You got me, Yeah. And I shall rotate the rotator. Hold it. You're going to. That would probably be enough. Well, you're going to struggle though, ain't you? No, it's going in that way. There's plenty of clearance. Yeah, but if you get that one down inside, it's safer, isn't it? You can do. Good. No, because you've got to compress the ring. That's how we broke it last time. Right, OK. That'll be fine, though. All right, let me just... Deactivate, right. So what we're doing, Nev, is gently warming the piston so that the gudgeon pin slides in and out nicely because they're freezing cold in that. Yeah, at the moment, look now, well, you see you can't push that in and out. So you heat the piston up to expand the aluminium. Only slightly. Only slightly. And then the steel pin will slide in. But when you're fitting the piston to the conrod, you've only got a few seconds to do it. But the first one went in bush. very nicely indeed. It did. Bush, yes, I'm ready for the bush. Excited. Well. I saw the photo shoot. Yeah, that's a before and after we've broken it. 
Right, I shall start the warming process, Bradley. I know. It's very pleasing to know for both of us actually that the last people to have done this on this particular engine were the Rolls Royce at Crew. At Crew, yeah. Isn't that right, Martin? What's that, uh, the last people to have done this on this en particular engine was actually was Rolls Royce. Rolls -Royce. Yeah. So well, we just t changed the carb on the mozzie and that was a similar sort of feeling there. Yeah. People that put it on are probably not around anymore. No, no. It's a mode. Yeah, John Marshall did a really nice touch on the So the measurement on the pin and the measurement on the hole has worked smooth. Interference uh, fit. Interference. Slight interference yeah. fit, yeah. So, yeah. The, on the so look, now you can see, see look. So that's the, the trick. So I should warm it a bit more. So we've got, are you, are you ready to roll? Are you? I'm, I'm ready, yeah. Okay. So these, these, you can carry on heating these pistons because they've never been through an overhaul shop they've still got the machining marks on from the factory which you don't tend to see on on ones that have been through yeah, an overhaul yeah. shop so these, this is as original as original gets even the rings because it's not really hasn't really run in anger even the yeah. rings are only just yeah. sort of bedding in go on then brothers you ready yeah Your pin's too far in. You're not. You're not on. You're not in the. Hang on. No, you're not on the on the rock. Yeah, right. Come out again. Yeah. Go. Ooh, where am I? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, yes. Fitted. Fitted. And then the last part of it is there's a little snap ring that goes in there to retain the gudgeon pin. And they go obviously go into grooves. Yes. Yeah. I think Martin's got that he can show you. So here's the piston, and you can see this side look Neville. The clip is already in. You feel that? So the good. So that way, then when you put the the gudgeon pin in it can't come out the other way other side stop, right yeah. comes to a stop so you know you're in that also means then that you know you're in the right place put the gudgeon in the, the gudgeon pin in the the uh, clipping for the gudgeon pin on the other side but as you can see at the moment that's properly gripped in there yeah, it's amazing what a little bit of heat does isn't it yeah there's no nothing to compress it with oh i see yeah I don't know if it's a tool for it, I doubt it. So when they're operating at high temperatures running, um, obviously the casting will expand. And what about the steel? Well that's thing? all that's all part of the designed in feature because the, the gudgeon pin will move in the piston, but that's fine because you can see here these holes in the piston which allow the oil to rotate to get in to allow the rotation of the gudgeon pin. Yeah. It's only splash pin, isn't it? Yeah. But you actually see in the bores of any engine, but you see it more on these because they're bigger. Is there's a there is a tide mark for want of a better word. Um, where the top of the piston actually reaches when it's in operation, but it doesn't reach when it's cold because the the rods um, we're in the rods spring slightly, don't they? Yes. Is the piston head shape for inlet and outlet valve? Can you? Spin no, the, there isn't. There isn't. There, there is a. There, I don't know if the early ones were. Oh, they're even. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a standard bowl combustion yeah. type. The difference is uh, there's a thrust side to the piston. Um, which is the side that the most loads on when the engine fires yeah so when it fires and it pushes the piston down they have a tendency to rock slightly on the gudgeon pin as they go down and hence the reason why you have a thrust side um, and a drag side and if you actually look 
on most engines that have run you can look carefully that's slightly polished in that area there whereas that side is slightly dull yeah so that that tends to suggest that that's the thrust side yeah. Yeah. which is the inlet side which makes sense because that's that's the side closest to the inboard side and when the piston goes down when it fires yeah. it pushes against the con rod and they tend to rock to one side yeah and obviously you get more load on the piston when it's fired than you do on the exhaust stroke the piston comes back up again so it comes up on compression then the engine fires and you get the burn that thrust puts more load on the side of the piston because it will rock slightly in the bore then when it comes back up for the exhaust stroke the piston will rock again but the load will be much less because you succeeded in getting it in once before brad that's lovely Right brothers, we are going to have to do a load of rotating, so this is the one that we've got to watch. Yeah. We've got to get both one and six at top dead all the So I've got, this is the urgent one Brad, because of the foil ring. Keep coming brothers. Okay, you've got to go down with that one then, Brad. Right. Right. Do you want me to go into the ball, yeah? This Merlin engine is for taxing purposes only. It is not an airworthy engine. The two days at the elevator to just change tailplane. While this is going on, Spen and Taff are working on the electric inside the fuselage. Oh, that's a good clearance, isn't it? Hang on, let Yeah, it's, it's a... Well, that's there for a minute, because uh, we've got to get this one to... This one's got to go through a hole. Yeah, well, that, that's in anyway, so... Yeah, I don't, I don't want to let this down, because it'll yeah, well, wrestle. Well, say, so if we pull down on this end, that end will go up. Get your brick under. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So now we just need to lever this end up a bit then. Go, go inside, I'm going to have to go in this end at the same time. Right. <laughs> Torch, really. torch. Hang on, hang on, we've got to get a torch. Easy to get it off, wouldn't it? It's thick, it goes all the way down. You got your finger on the top one? Yeah. So you can't lean on there. Get that one the other side of the. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hang on, Dave. Give me a second. What unit is that? It's the generator control panel. So I've got the voltage regulator and the cut out switch on here. So. We're looking on putting on the uh, installing the starboard generating system this winter. Oh, so uh, we won't have to just rely on the batteries 
no. when they're doing the running. Yeah. Yeah. So I just rewired this bit up now, so I'm going to refit it and then wire it into the aircraft. Great. Well, thank you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, we can slide forward, I think, like that, like that. I'll pull it. Yeah, there's a bit of forward. Gliding in. Gliding in. Gliding in. Gliding in. Gliding in. The first eight feet to come with this side. Yeah. 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 Still not them very good for me then. That's it. That's it. That's it. Down with that. Well, this is fitting it. That hinge is dropped with that. Will that other hinge go up? Oh, middle one. It's only got four. That's in. That's in. That's it. 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 That's Oh, well, it might have done. Yeah. Where are you? Uh, top. Oh, hang on, I'm top inboard, sorry. Oh, that's it. Right. Um, that's it. Um, that's it. Right. That's it. 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 Middle one, just so the, uh, okay. but to be honest, there's no weight on it. Oh, I'm going to